This astronaut touches alien artifact on a distant planet ignoring all protocols, and his life goes crazy. For generations, the question of whether we are alone in the universe has lingered in the minds of many. Commander Roger Nelson, the bravest astronaut in the world, blasts off into space leaving Earth behind in search of extraterrestrial life. As he orbits our planet, he checks in with NASA, giving us a sneak peek into the mission's progress. Then it's time for some serious hibernation. Roger enters a deep sleep for 18 months, conserving his energy for the long journey ahead. Two and a half years ago, while Roger was chilling at a barbecue with his wife, Abigail, he got a call that would change everything. Turns out, a satellite picked up some strange radio signals from deep space, and they needed Roger's expertise to investigate. The signals were coming from three different locations in our solar system, Titan, Neptune's moon, and the dwarf planet Eris. Roger was like, whoa, this is straight out of a sci-fi movie. But even though the scientists were skeptical, they decided to send a spacecraft to find the source of these signals. And guess who they chose to lead the mission? That's right, our boy Roger. He didn't hesitate for a second, even though it meant leaving Abigail for 10 years to become the first human to make contact with aliens. Now, back on the spaceship, Roger's preparing to hibernate for the long flight. But before he does, he learns that the Chinese have postponed their own mission due to weather conditions. This gives Roger a chance to reach Titan first, and he's pumped. As he readies the capsule, he thinks back to his last conversation with Abigail. She begged him to stay with her, but Roger knew this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Eighteen months later, Roger wakes up from hibernation, thanks to his trusty AI assistant, ChatGPT. He's approaching Saturn and its moon, Titan, and there are some urgent messages from NASA waiting for him. Roger calls Abigail, but the distance makes their conversation a bit laggy. They even try playing chess, but it's super challenging. Roger decides to check out the messages from NASA. Turns out, the Chinese have delayed their flight by a year and are skipping Saturn altogether, heading straight for Neptune. Roger's got to prepare for Titan's orbit, and he manually guides the ship into position. Everything goes smoothly, and Roger reviews images taken by a probe to find the best landing site. Minutes before landing, Roger gets some messages from his boss, Becca. Something's wrong with Abigail, but Becca tells Roger to stay focused on the mission and finding the signal's source. The shuttle descends onto Titan's surface, and Roger manages a smooth landing despite the stress. He immediately starts collecting samples and surveying the area. Roger inserts a hose into a strange liquid to get some samples. While the material is being transferred back to the ship, Roger scans the signal and locates its source. He ventures a few meters away from the ship, and his fears are confirmed. The signal is coming from the lake. To retrieve the source, Roger has to submerge his arm in liquid methane. The source turns out to be a small, unusual sphere, but Roger can't examine it right away. The program tells him to return to the ship to avoid getting caught in a dangerous storm. Roger rushes back to the shuttle, but the AI won't let him take off, saying it's too risky. They have to wait out the storm. During this time, Roger decides to take a closer look at the object he came here for. The program assures him it's not emitting anything harmful, but protocol dictates that Roger must securely store it. But our boy Roger's not one to follow rules. He removes his gloves and touches the sphere, and it responds with a strange image. Startled, Roger places the object in a safe and starts the shuttle's engine. Within hours, he's back on his ship, preparing to leave Titan's orbit and head to the next source. Roger reports to NASA that the first phase was a success and shows them the sample he found. He also records a message for Abigail, confessing that it was all worth it and that he succeeded in his task. Every time Roger looks at the sphere, it seems to beckon him. This time, he's distracted by an incoming message alert. Hoping it's Abigail, Roger rushes to the monitor. But it's Becca, thanking Roger for his work and urging him to be careful not to ruin anything. Becca doesn't mention Abigail, and Roger starts to worry. He sends a reply, admitting that he wants to repeat the experiment and touch the sphere again. While waiting for a response, Roger analyzes the liquid samples and reviews the chess game they started at the beginning of the flight. The liquid is rich in amino acids and closely resembles some samples found on Earth. Finally, Roger receives a message from Abigail, revealing that someone hacked her computer. She's been completely cut off from the mission and hasn't received any updates about her husband. 
Roger musters all his strength to support Abigail and convince her that they will see each other soon. The astronaut enters another hibernation period, lasting 32 months as the ship travels towards Neptune. This time, something goes wrong. Roger experiences dreams, which shouldn't happen during hypersleep. Upon waking, Roger learns that the scouting drone failed its mission and he will have to collect all the materials himself. He's also surprised to discover that Abigail hasn't sent him a single message during this time. But the most astonishing revelation is yet to come. During his sleep, the sphere exhibited an anomaly. Its signal fluctuated slightly, and Nelson's brain responded to these changes with increased activity. Curious, Nelson retrieves the sphere but refrains from touching it again, returning to his work to avoid causing any further problems. From the message, the astronaut learns that during the anomaly, the sphere transmitted a binary code, which Earth has yet to decipher. Additionally, Becker leaves Roger a secret text message, asking him to keep an eye on the artificial intelligence, which someone has attempted to hack. Nelson takes out the sphere again, and ignoring the program's warnings, decides to touch it once more. As soon as he does, strange images and memories of his wife flood his mind. The ship enters orbit, and before landing, the commander reviews a message from Becker. On the screen, the boss appears agitated, urging the astronaut to be cautious as an incident has occurred with the Chinese team. The shuttle lands on Triton, and Roger collects samples for further analysis. Navigating through sharp rocks, the astronaut follows the signal to find the second source. Within minutes, he succeeds. Nelson discovers a familiar sphere amidst a pile of rocks. The return journey to the ship proves more challenging. Nelson drops the case containing the alien sphere and the program informs him of damage to his spacesuit. Despite this and the difficult terrain, Roger manages to reach the shuttle and leave Triton's surface in time. The astronaut reports his findings about the second transmitter in his message and promises to analyze the samples he has acquired. Roger receives a message from his wife, who has aged significantly during his four-year journey. Abigail confesses that she is struggling but is immensely proud of her husband's discoveries. Analysis of the ice from Triton reveals that the water there is unlike anything found on Earth. However, the program notices another anomaly. Beneath the planet's thick crust, there is another body of water, and within it, there is movement resembling that of fish. A message from NASA reaches the ship, but this time, Roger sees the face of a different director, who instructs the astronaut to cease his experiments to avoid provoking problems with extraterrestrial races. The old man also warns Roger that he will no longer see anyone but him, as the mission has become highly classified. The old man's prohibitions do not deter Roger, and he proceeds to examine the second sphere. As soon as the captain touches the transmitter, images and memories resurface in his mind. Several months later, Nelson finally reaches the third point, the planet Eris. The astronaut already knows what to look for, and the sphere quickly falls into his hands, allowing him to avoid lingering on the dark planet. After starting the engine, Roger intends to return to the ship, but it becomes clear that the Chinese have hacked his virtual assistant, forcing the astronaut to completely wipe the program's memory. Finally, Nelson manages to restore the neural assistant's functionality and asks the bot to analyze the material from Iris. Within minutes, Roger realizes he wasn't mistaken. What he found on the planet is a form of life containing DNA. Nelson forbids the program from sending the information to headquarters, wanting to be the first to share this sensational discovery with the world. Roger records a message for Becker and his wife, promising her that he will return home soon. For four hours, the astronaut receives no response from NASA, and he begins to worry that his revelation may not have reached Earth. To occupy his mind, Roger arranges the three spheres in a row and touches them in turn, hoping to understand their purpose. As soon as all three objects are close together, in Roger's hands, his visions become more vivid and intriguing, but a sharp sound echoes through the ship, and the program alerts the captain that millions of radio signals are simultaneously passing through their communication system. The bot cannot analyze these signals, but it manages to determine that each one has a code that can be used to pinpoint the source's location. Looking at the map, Nelson realizes that millions of similar spheres are inviting him to join them, to unlock new cosmic mysteries. The exhilarated astronaut understands that each transmitter represents a way to encounter new life forms. Suddenly, the spheres in Roger's hands stop glowing, 
and the program reports a new, much stronger signal source located beyond the explored territories of the universe. Nelson asks the bot to calculate how long it would take to reach it, and upon learning that it would take 38 years, the astronaut understands that he must take the risk. Roger records a final farewell message to his wife, confessing that he must find the sphere that is calling to him. The astronaut releases Abigail from all obligations and concludes their chess game, accepting defeat. Neither the program's pleas, the threats from his superiors, nor Abigail's tears can sway Roger. He injects himself with medication and prepares for hypersleep, determined to find the new sphere and whoever sent the signal. And that's where the movie ends. So, what do you think? Are we alone in the universe?